This week on California Bountiful, from animal feedings at the living desert to we've got a share, to backyard blooms and bouquets, we also find a future gin, plus a spotlight on the FFA before getting down to the shrimp and grits. California Bountiful starts now. Hello and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino, and for this episode, we're coming to you from Palm Desert at the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens. This nonprofit zoo and desert botanical garden is home to more than 500 animals, representing over 150 species, and some of them have pretty healthy appetites. I'm now in the Animal Care Nutrition Center and we're gonna learn about the herbivores diet because little did you know, we eat a lot of the same things. And I'm here with Heather, who's in the midst of preparing some meals. And it's true, we might not think about it, but a lot of the things that we consume as humans is very similar to what the animals are eating. Not totally the same, but you're gonna explain all that to us. <laughs> Absolutely, so there are many similarities. We have lots of animals here who do eat things like carrots and broccoli and romaine lettuce, like we eat in our salads. But we also have many animals who eat other things in addition to those items, okay. such as browse, which is basically trees. Today I am working on Jolly's diet. Jolly is our black rhino, or one of the two that we have. And I'm focusing mostly on the produce part. So here today I'm gonna to be giving him some sweet potato, some carrot, and some apple. And we weigh out very specific amounts of these items for the individual. So a rhino is going to get a much different amount than say a, a tiny little bird. Meal prep at the Living Desert is a critical part of the daily routine. But as far as the produce diets go, we generally are prepping every single day and that can take anywhere from three hours to four hours depending on you know, our volunteers' time. But on the other side of the zoo, we also prep a lot of other diets so that include fish and meat and bugs, and um, that can also take up to three hours. Wow. Per day. Here we have deliveries of produce every day. We also get fish deliveries. We get frozen rodents to feed some of our carnivores, mm -hmm. and we also get meat diets as well. Jolly is one of the many herbivores at the zoo who are typically fed once a day. He does get a lot of produce that we use mostly for training. However, he is a big guy, and this is just not enough for him. So in addition to this produce, he gets what we call browse. So black rhinos are browsers, and then they also get fun little biscuits like this. <laughs> so this is kind of similar to feeding a, a cat or a dog kibble that you have at home, um, but this is designed for a rhino because it has the micronutrients and minerals and all of the things that a browser would be eating specifically. I'm glad that you point that out because when I think of feeding my kids carrots and apples and sweet potatoes and lettuce, obviously I'm trying to make sure that they get their green veggies, I'm making sure that they get all the vitamins that they need for their own nutrition, so it's the same approach with animals. Absolutely, so we do take all of their nutritional needs into account when formulating a diet. And different animals have different diets. Absolutely, <laughs> yes, so while Jolly focuses more on like the greens and the produce and the browse, we have some pelicans that eat only fish. When it comes to feeding, some animals get to stick their necks out for visitors. Everybody that comes through the zoo can come feed our giraffe for a fee, and they get to feed romaine lettuce, and we like to, to joke that the giraffe are bottomless pits and that they can eat all day long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is great. I, I don't have any more. I'm out. <laughs> Tweak is like, I know you have more. Okay, now I'm out. Every time somebody feeds a giraffe, it's an amazing experience. It's one of the reasons we do it here is because you get to get kind of eye level with the giraffe and you get to see their tongues. They have an inch of tongue for every foot of their body. So their tongues can be up to 17 inches long and it's really great, especially to see kids or adults that have never even seen a giraffe be able to feed and experience that, that tongue and experience how they eat their food as, as browsers. And animal care staff must keep tabs on how much and what is being consumed. Zoomed. We have 10 giraffe in here that we feed all throughout the day. So giraffe eat about 23 hours of the day, so it is a full-time job keeping them fed. They get a bale of hay, so they get a large amount of hay as part of their diet. 
They also get brows, which is tree trimmings that we trim for them. And they get about 75 pounds of brows per day. We would like that to be a little bit higher, but we are restricted based on our seasonality with our trees here on grounds. And then they also get produce and they get a grain diet. So we do, we can have giraffes that eat a little much and need to eat a little more salad and a little less grain. So we do monitor that. We weigh our giraffes every week and that's through a voluntary process where we ask our giraffes to go on the scale and in exchange for going on the scale, they get a little piece of food. But overall, balancing their diets while satisfying those appetites is a tall order. We get about 650 pounds of produce every week that comes in and that is actually locally sourced. If we won't eat it, we don't feed it is our, is our motto here. And we try to make sure that our diets are human food. So if, if I want to eat it, then the, the giraffe want to eat it. Um, we don't feed them anything that is, we have regulations through USDA, so we can't feed anything that's expired. Uh, everything has to be human quality. Now for a Bountiful Spotlight. So the Mighty Hunker Goat Program um, started six years ago. It's a program that allows students um, with intellectual disabilities to work together with students out of the um, general education programs. Um, and they are paired together to raise and show a goat for the Glen County Fair. I am a mentor for Adam. Adam's pretty shy. I mean, he's still pretty shy, but I think uh, he's coming out of his shell a little, a little bit more. Uh, so I think that's the, bi the, the biggest thing. And I think he's, he has a little bit more joy and confidence when he comes out here. This is Franny, and we're buddies. <laughs> She's my kid through the program, and I help her show her goat and raise her goat. I love my bond with Franny. She's so funny, and watching her interact with the goat, it's so funny. So. I love it. <laughs> We're gonna walk around the circle. I love seeing the kids and just the bonds that they make with the special needs kids. They learn how to feed, clean, walk um, their goats and so they can go to the fair. Class one is in the ring. I'm a little nervous. I wanna place good, I wanna do good, we wanna look good. Are you excited or nervous or anything? I'm both in a weird way. Kind of. Yeah. Um, ten, he's a little fast sometimes. Last three FFA market goats. The mentality when you get into the ring, it's like, and of course now it's gonna be me, Adam, the goat, and the judge. So it's just, you gotta have that like focus. It's, it's a cool fe feeling because you're not focused on everybody else. Something cool is just seeing those students um, with special needs come out of their shell and be who they truly are around people because the animals help them. So, I definitely love my bond with Franny. I didn't get to know her before this program, so getting to know her while raising a goat, it's like two of my favorite things. <laughs> Straight ahead, micro farming spring blooms in the Silicon Valley and I get my hands into floral DIY. But first, we're cooking up shrimp grits and California farmstead cheddar. California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Celebrate spring in the bounty of the North State at the California Nut Festival on Saturday, May 13th at the Patrick Ranch Museum. Almonds, walnuts, pecans, and pistachios take center stage along with plenty of food and beverage tastings too. Plus, you'll be entertained by live bands and enjoy amazing local artistry and shopping for artisan goods. Find out who will be named our new nutty chef as talented local chefs compete in a friendly cooking competition. Don't miss the nut-filled fun. Get your tickets for the California Nut Festival online or at the Patrick Ranch Museum today.
Now that the animals have got their fill, our Farm Bureau Foodies insider Anna Genesee visits with Chef John at Redwood Cafe in Oakdale as he prepares a scrumptious dish of shrimp and grits made with Fiscalini cheddar. Hey gang, here we are with Chef John in his kitchen at Redwood Cafe in Oakdale. And this morning we get to try this amazing dish. Um, what are we having this morning? Today we're gonna make some shrimp and grits. We'll use the Fiscalini Farmstead Old World Bandage Cheddar inside the grits and play it off with the shrimp and a little bit of spiciness from the tasso ham and the spices that we're gonna add to it. So let's get started. A little olive oil, again, we're gonna keep it on a medium to low heat so we're not burning everything and just kind of getting rid of there. A little bacon. Because it makes everything better. Of course. And here's that tasso ham that I was talking about. The tasso ham has a nice little spice on the outside of it and it really produces a great flavor that's gonna play well with the bandage cheddar. So what's so important about using that local Fiscalini cheese? What does it do for this dish? So the Fiscalini cheese, being local, it really helps to bring customers from them and also we get to represent what they're doing as well. So we're really happy to have that partnership. And the cheddar, it's an old world style cheddar. It has a little earthy flavor, a little nuttiness that we really like to play off with the acidity in the tomatoes. So what we've got here is we've got the shrimp, we've got the, the tasso, we have the bacon, we're going there. We'll add a little garlic. We'll add a little salt and pepper. So here I'm gonna deglaze the, plant, the pan, pull off all the greatness off the bottom of the pan. Now, is this a popular selection off the menu? This has become really popular here at the Redwood Cafe in Oakdale. It's a little different than the one we have in Modesto, but we do that on purpose to kind of pull you back and forth to both restaurants. So we add a little Corto Paziala tomatoes. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. The Stanislaus County, Stanislaus tomato product. Loving it again, another localized dish. And here's the kicker. A the little, butter. A little butter. Everything's now, better with home, butter. You can't smell this, but it smells amazing. Don't worry. You can come to Redwood Cafe <laughs> and try it. Here's my favorite part. We get to actually taste this. So we finished it with the cheddar and the butter. Oh my lands, look at that. Nice creaminess, cheesy. I can you can smell, smell it the from cheese. Here, right? <laughs> then I we can take smell the, the shrimp, place it around the outside. Oh my like land, so. that's beautiful. I made an extra couple pieces for uh, those lucky enough to be in studio. And we'll finish it with a little bit of sauce. A little local microgreens from Langworth lettuce. Okay. And now the best part. A little bit of shrimp, a little bit of grits. Right. Voila. Mm-hmm. That's good. I can taste the cheese. The cheese will be very prominent in this dish. I'm just going to go dish. ahead and take another bite. From savory to sweet, here's what's good for you. Did you know that all it takes is eight strawberries each day to start observing some of their hefty health benefits? That's right, this versatile berry can be enjoyed fresh, frozen, or even baked into a treat. Now, strawberries are loaded with antioxidants, which can help keep your immune system and your mind sharp. On top of that, they contain natural flavonoids to help balance blood sugar, and their high fiber content has even shown to help reduce the risk of a heart attack. Plus, they'll definitely help you stay hydrated this summer as they're 92% water. I love using frozen strawberries to make a homemade milkshake or smoothie, but of course you can also just add fresh slices on top of your yogurt, oatmeal, even to a salad or with a sandwich. If you're looking for a creative and refreshing dessert, then head to Ashley Hawk RD, where you can get the recipe for these cream cheese stuffed strawberries. They're sure to be your next favorite, and the best part is you're gonna know you're doing good for your body while you enjoy them. Still to come, distilling backyard botanicals into a forward-facing bottle. But up next, building custom bouquets with specialty cut flowers, you're watching California Bountiful. We need someone to be there, knowing they'll always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day. Doing what you love is everything, so we can celebrate the joy it brings. 
There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side Golden Sky Country Music Festival coming to Sacramento October 14th and 15th with Eric Church. All you gotta do is put a drink in my hand. John Party. Marin Morris. Parker McCullough. And Jordan Davis, Lady Wilson, Winona Judd, and more. Golden Sky Country Music Festival at Discovery Park in downtown Sacramento. Passes starting at $10 down at GoldenSkyFestival.com. Are you looking to uncover more of the bounty of California's rich, diverse, and delicious food and wine scene? Then it's time to get social with us. Find even more great content from Farm to Fork and everything in between, like recipes behind the scenes on food and wine tours, plus useful info on what's good for you and so much more. Join an engaging community of like-minded foodies and tell us what great story ideas you have for us, too. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the conversation now. Find, follow, and talk to us on social at CA Bountiful. Welcome back. Spring is in full bloom and we've discovered an atypical farm in Los Altos, California, growing specialty cut flowers and they're giving me a little lesson in DIY. Just a stone's throw from tech giants in the Silicon Valley sits a quiet flower farm tucked in the Los Altos foothills. We're a small little property, but I feel like we're big in the sense that we can share floral farming and doing something really different to get away from the hustle bustle stress of not just tech, but work in general. Charmaine Turbo is the green thumb behind the unassuming Turbo Farms. The mission behind Turbo Farms would be essentially the three words that really describe our farm. Cultivate, gather, and create. Cultivate in the truest sense of growing flowers, gathering, not only gathering the blooms, but also gathering people and bringing them together so that we can teach them how to create something beautiful. Our kids have been able to grow with us in this whole process and that they're continuing on to grow with us and that they're excited about the farm as well and as much as we are. Now we're starting to see more unique things. So when it comes to micro farming, mm -hmm. it's we have to be very intentional about how we grow things and where we place them just because we're limited by space. And one of the biggest things was is that we wanted to micro farm, but at the same time have space for our kids to run. Right. Have their friends here, have our animals. And um, so we have to be very, very planned and some, in some ways methodical. The small family run farm planted its roots in 2018 by tucking their blooms into the way they live, utilizing the existing native greenery in their yard and adding as they continue to grow. The nice part about us being intentional in how we've planted things is mm -hmm. we can select what type of greenery right. we, we can use and that it's unique in that way. It's fun and frustrating <laughs> at the same time. Not everything always goes as planned and I think if there's one thing that I've learned, we just really need to um, roll with mother nature. You know, I grew up with my mom growing, she's gonna kill me for saying this, the, the really strong pungent red geraniums mm -hmm. and that's what I knew it was kind of also like status which is another flower that we grow here where it was like the purple dried flowers that would sit in oh. the dining room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I vowed that that's something that I wasn't going to grow here <laughs> that I want to grow something hi, mom. yeah hi mom um, so now when people come here they get to smell the scented geranium they mm -hmm. get to feel and see texturally what it's all about and how different it is from my mom's geraniums. Growing both common and not so common flowers, Turbo Farms shares their harvest through on-site workshops. I would think it's unique because we're pulling it from our own property. It's not like the standard. Right, right. So that, that's what makes it a little bit more different is that you're not gonna necessarily find leaves like Fatsia mm -hmm. at the grocery store. Offering a unique experience, immersing participants in the world of floral farming and design. I think the funnest part is actually seeing people when they've created something from start to finish where they get to learn about the plant that they're cutting from mm -hmm. and in the end they get to design with it yeah. and for most people they don't get to do that. I like my pieces to look like they've just come out of the garden mm -hmm. instead of like really structured just 
flowing natural so that it breathes with your home. And I saw firsthand how this farmette puts her blooms to work. Today we're gonna do a low centerpiece. Um, the tools that we're gonna use is good old chicken wire, really nice and simple. You need a good sharp pair of snips that are clean. Um, and we have some floral tape. So how I would normally start is I would take this and we just turn it into a little bit of a dome. Next, we're going to start our piece, but we need water. So we'll have um, Kim go ahead and fill our vessel and make sure you fill it up pretty much full, maybe about um, a centimeter to an inch below the top. Perfect. So I'm just gonna lay out our greenery first. Mm -hmm. We have some lemon eucalyptus and things that we harvested this morning, yes. Aubrey. We've got some chocolate geranium. Mm -hmm. We've got the rose of attar geranium. And you see how we're creating this yeah. scooping shape. Aubrey, where would you like to see this? <laughs> Rot row. <laughs> I don't I don't want to mess up your shape. Nope. Yeah, you're, no, something you're like good. that. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. So I'm also gonna layer them in so that it creates more textural interest. It could be as simple as this. Coming up, a genuine drink powered by female founders. Home is where you start the day. Out the door, you're on your way. All the places you want to go Maybe you should take it slow There's so much to care for in your life That's why Nationwide is on your side The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pack, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government, protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. Welcome back. This next story features a group of spirited women moving old school gin into the future, and they're doing it by squeezing homegrown California fruits into a bottle. Looking for gin? No. Uh-uh. No. Yes, here we go. Here is a colorless liquid that looks like water. It has a sweet taste. Future gin is a traditional dry gin, and what that means is that it's juniper and citrus forward. It's something that I have been thinking about for a long time because I love gin, and I love botanicals, spirits that have botanicals in them, like vermouth, other botanical-based spirits. My wine company I own by myself, so I was like, I'm not gonna do a gin project unless I have partners, unless you all will come on board and we'll all share the pros, the cons, the highs, the lows, <laughs> the successes together. It was really Amy's idea who wanted to make this uh, gin that really represented Los Angeles and California. And so she kind of put together the dream team, which was really cool. Made in Los Angeles, the spirit is an ode to everything the founders love about the Golden State. I think we all wanted to utilize local botanicals as much as possible for two reasons. Uh, a, we do like to showcase California, but also we love California and the citrus and the avocado and the grape leaves that grow here. The abundance of the state. 
use like fresh Meyer lemon peels, like like literally hand peeled, which actually we were taking in the beginning, like the first batch was from our yard and now it's coming from our neighbor's yard, <laughs> actually, because we moved. And I think that really speaks to this like light, vibrant California dry style gin. Like we didn't want it to be too esoteric or too herbaceous. We wanted it to be accessible and a gin that people would want to drink that didn't necessarily like gin to begin with. Like I feel like we've converted a lot of non-gin drinkers actually. Some of the California botanicals that we're using are say avocado leaves, which do come from my backyard here in East LA and grape leaves, which obviously are all over California as well. We're using also fennel, which grows wild all over California. So those are some of the California botanicals that we're using. And the avocado leaves, like every time we do a distillation, I go down there and pick a big paper bag full of avocado leaves. And I love avocados and I love California. I love the lushness and how lucky we are to have like citrus growing all over the state, not just in my yard. We were inspired by the Meyer lemons at, at our tree. And also, yes, we needed to use them all. <laughs> like we had too many. I mean, yeah, we use avocado leaf from Amy's backyard. So it was just fun to use what we have here in LA, like our, our bounty here in our backyards. The origin of gin dates back to the 17th century, but like its name, this modernized spirit is focused on the future. If they're not a big fan of gin, I think they think of their like grandparents gin, like a sort of like very astringent, uh, high alcohol content, something that doesn't taste very good. And so we were very conscious to make something that actually tasted good if you sipped it. And that's very difficult to do with gin. So with us, we specifically, besides the citrus notes, the avocado leaf gives it a little fattiness, if you will, like unctuousness on the tongue, and we don't chill filter it. So that also gives it um, this smoother finish. From a dry martini to a Negroni or gin and tonic, every sip offers cheers to a brighter future. We uh, donate 10% of our proceeds each year to um, a California based and focused nonprofit. The last couple years, it's been Downtown Women's Center. This year, we're focusing on Dignity Moves. So we just wanna make sure that we're doing, you, you're, you're drinking gin, but also doing good at the same time. Wow, they really put their backyard fruit trees to good use. And that's gonna do it for this episode from Living Desert Zoo and Gardens in Palm Desert. For more travel ideas around here, you can go to visitgreaterpalmsprings.com. Thanks for hanging out with me. And remember, you can always find us online at californiabountiful.com. I'm Aubrey Aquino, take care, and we'll see you next time.